Hey everybody, welcome to a very special guest-powered episode of the Disc Only Podcast. And I'm Jules. I fucking knew it. And I'm Jules. And I'm here to I fucking knew it. it. I fucking knew it. I just, this just, I was just waiting. I was just waiting. <laughs> he's eating, he's eating, his, uh, he's eating his cheese, it's milk, and ketchup. Hi, <laughs> welcome are. to the Disc Only Podcast, I'm where everything on. is incredibly predictable. I'm Proton John. Listen, Tom, I know you're going to wait for it. And I'm Jules, and so I figured that, like, I would just say it out, you know, like, right out so that you wouldn't have to wait that long. We could just get to it. We'd just get to it. That's just, not gonna, that's not even bother introducing the other three. It's just me and Jules. The other three and can I'm just Tom. interject over. Steven. I'm, I'm, I'm Tom, and I'll have what Jules is having. I'm, I'm Steven George. That's my name. That's the one that I was born with. I'm Jared. I usually come last, but then Jules was supposed to be after me, but then he did it first, so now I'm very confused. We're competitive video gamers. I'm going to get out in front, and you're going to need a blue shell. If you, want you, are the, <laughs> you are the speedrunner uh, out of all of us, for sure. Actually, John, John you've done speedrunning, right? Uh, I... It's not. I've tried it. It's not my thing. I mean, I've done, I've done I speedrunner. I don't like I, one game enough to be like, I'm going to play this for days. Imagine being a gamer and playing video games. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. We're here with uh, with uh, uh, Mario Speedrunner, Doorbell Man, VTuber, Acknowledged <laughs> Family Jewels. Yes, keep going. <laughs> keep, keep reading down the line. <laughs> right. So uh, I figured since we normally have... Sorry, I started late because I forgot to set up something important. I figured since we have our, uh, our heads are lit up here whenever we talk, I figured it'd be a nice thing to add one for Jules. But I don't have any graphic skills, so this was the best I could do. I also didn't have any space on the screen either, which also complicated things. So have a little tiny jewels <laughs> on the side there. Way, that is way more production than I would have ever asked for. Thank you. That actually looks really sick. I like it. He's right next to the guest too, so yeah, it's like I would perfect. Have a little it's tiny, appropriate. A little tiny jewels. It's a baby jewels. I was, I was sad to be like a little like stick figure with just like some like three spikes coming out of the top of it. Uh, yeah, that's you. I'd be like, yeah. You're right. I mean, you're gonna you're you're gonna dehydrate from how big that tear is. True. <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee, which is a commonly commonly believed myth that the diuretic effects of coffee um, make it so that coffee does not hydrate you. That has actually been demystified, demythified even. Uh, the water content of coffee actually outweighs the diuretic element so you still technically get water every time you drink a coffee a lot but what if you buy it from starbucks <laughs> it's it's dude bean water is bean then, water then you're having the diarrheic effect of coffee what if they don't use water <laughs> you, whoa look a is latte a yeah, get me some right now <laughs> <laughs> I cut a, latte, out all the water. a latte is whenever you add five dollars to a cup of coffee don't let anybody ever tell you <laughs> how many times i have to tell you guys you can't put co ground coffee in the water portion of the coffee maker i don't care oh. what the internet says there's no such thing as double coffee was it <laughs> coliseum 2 was, <laughs> was was a lot to deal with i we had to take any measures possible <laughs> Jack and I were making coffee in in, in ways not known by mere mortals. Yeah, the, people Jules. Beach, the people who own that beach house are still mad at us. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Jules, do you remember the time at MAGFest whenever freaking Jack found the coffee grounds oh. in the trash can and made coffee oh. from the coffee grounds? Oh, my. What? That's... What? Please tell me that's was, not real. Was Jack real. living in a cardboard box during this MAGFest? Like, yeah. take, no. take what you can get. So I can't remember the exact story behind why he did that, but you I know he was just like, dude, I just need some coffee, bro. You know? <laughs> Three in the morning, because Magfest loved to give us panels at like one to three a.m. Every yeah. time, every time we've ever tried to do a panel there, they're like, either <laughs> no panel or one or one to three a.m. What do you want? And we're like, are you re really? So then, yeah, that <laughs> happened. And then, yeah, Jack was like, "Bruh, I'm gonna need some coffee right now. I don't care how it how it gets in my system, but it's getting in my system, and that is how it got in his system." But, like, I don't think it was there for, like, forever. It was, like, somebody had made coffee with it, like, the day before or something like that. I can't remember exactly oh, that, what. Oh, that so just lot. improved the story so much. Look, see, I'm just see, trying. See, I'm trying to make it better. I'm trying. No, no, no. By, I don't, by I don't think you're going to succeed here. made it worse. Because when you said it wasn't there that long, I thought it was, like, I, I don't even know where this was, by the way. I'm assuming it was, like, a, like in your hotel room, like, in the trash can that, like, that you guys had. 
And I'm really hoping it's not like they threw out the coffee grounds from Starbucks and he went digging the public trash can for oh, No, 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 God, no. It was in the it was in the hotel room, for God's sake. No way. I, I, I don't think I don't think Jack is has, would ever be that desperate for coffee. Well, I mean, well, I don't that know. Pause, you'd, you'd have to ask him. That pause. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Jules like, might be. Listen. Yeah, I, I would. I would definitely. But I, I feel like I would find um, different. Oh, that's sick. I, I feel like that. I would definitely oh. go to greater lengths to get better quality coffee. If that makes sense, <laughs> like, I would. I would. Pro before I did that, I would probably sell a kidney. Um. For, <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't need that kidney. Like, like, I mean, like, like, like my you're... body would be sold for a good quality coffee. <laughs> I don't know what part, but something would be sold before I would go digging in the trash for... Because, <laughs> like, Starbucks is, like... It's, it's like... I'm pretty sure the highest caffeinated coffee you can get from... I'm pretty sure, too, yeah. Uh, by a lot, too. I think I think the most... The most caffeinated fast food... Because, technically, Starbucks is considered fast food coffee... That you can get is a... Is a venti blonde roast from Starbucks. Um... I, I I have to look it up, but it is more than the nitro cold brew, uh, any of that stuff. The the the, the regular blonde roast coffee. Um, mm. it's a lot of caffeine, and I would sell my kidney for it. Is what I'm saying. Blonde roast. See uh, see now now there's a uh, an offshoot. So so basically what you're saying is uh, there's a Starbucks inside of an Outback stab house where you can sell your kidney <laughs> for a coffee. No. Let's go. No. All right. Look, I, here, look, look, I have to make a reference look, Okay. To it. No, hold on. Like, this is good. The business is expanding now. <laughs> right, let's, let's play a fun game. All right. We nobody could have gotten away from it. Nobody look at, nobody look at Google. Um, how many milligrams is in a 20 ounce coffee, a 20 ounce venti blonde roast from Starbucks? Steven, you first. Lord have mercy. I don't know the milligram content of caffeine in beverages because I just drink a beverage. <laughs> you're you, a I, better like, man than I. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're, if you want to know the milligrams in your coffee, I think you've entered into a, a new scarier territory. Oh, uh, this has been my territory for a long time, Stephen. All right. So I, I assume that you, you, wait, you, you do, do you do K-cup coffee? I do. It's okay. It's, yeah, me, me too. Yeah. Um, but uh, K, K cup coffee, average caffeine, like in one of those. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, okay, so in uh, in one eight, like, like a mug, um, you'll get uh, like a, on average about a hundred milligrams of caffeine. Okay, from one from one mug of K cup coffee. I'm gonna say that blonde roast probably has around three hundred to three hundred fifty milligrams. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Frick you, Tommy took my answer. By the way, um, fine. I'll say two ninety nine. How about that? Oh my god! One dollar, Bob. One dollar. <laughs> yeah, right, right, you want? Right, let's go. Caffeine <laughs> is right. <laughs> what do you what do, what do you think, John? I mean, I don't have any sense of measurement for this because I don't intake any caffeine. But okay, so Starbucks. Know that about you? Yeah, I don't have. I gave up caffeine in two thousand three. Wow, better man than I. Yeah, uh, Sam. Well, the problem was I gave it up and then I started university, so that was a mistake. True. So, ah, <laughs> but yeah. I got through it somehow. Bro, I went to Starbucks today, like <laughs> like earlier today. <laughs> All right, so um, so what do we got, Jules? Four hundred and seventy-five milligrams of caffeine in a venti blonde roast coffee at Starbucks. It is the single most well, caf caffeinated drink that you can get. Uh, period. Generally, <laughs> well, <that's>, okay. Right. <laughs> okay, so that's but that's that's also a venti. Like, how how much is how much is a venti? Like, it's almost like uh, almost double a grande, right? Uh, it's twenty ounces, I believe. Could 20 we ounce. use could we use either ounces or like McDonald's sizes, like large, <laughs> well, so yeah, I can I follow the conversation, <laughs> dude. I, yeah, uh, a venti is twenty ounces. Okay, so let's see. I only use I only use American sizes. There's large, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> large and extra large. Large is large, where I start. Large, larger. I'm speaking with the manager. Uh, apparently, there's a, there's a larger size as well called a Trenta. Give me a root forty. Sorry, you, don't a you don't want to see how big a Trenta is compared hey, to the rest well, of it. They only do they only do Trenta iced drinks, so you can get okay. an uh, iced coffee Trenta, but you can't get a hot one. Okay, so it's like half a gallon. How, so how much was a is a was a standard <laughs> cup of coffee? 
That's like a hundred milligrams, about eight eight. All right, so so four four hundred seventy-five on the uh, on the the biggin, right? Mm -hmm. okay. The biggin, the biggin, the sip. Okay, yeah. uh, it's more of a chug than a sip. Okay, so that's uh, not that bad. In an eight ounce cup of coffee of of that particular roast, it's one hundred ninety milligrams of caffeine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's and yeah. So my that's, question for you, yeah. Jules, because you yeah. seem like the type of person that would be aware of this. <laughs> yes. Um, how much caffeine at the milligram level is dangerous? Yes. I um <laughs> just yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer. I'll accept it. Yeah, okay. Um no, I see I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think like can you I think uh, I actually did read this at one point. Um when I was a teenager, I did some dumb stuff. Let me tell you. Um, and one of the, one of those dumb stuffs uh, led us to actually research this very thing. And I think what we found is that I think the amount of caffeine it would take to be lethal would it would happen way after the point at which you would die from just ingesting that much liquid. You know, like your 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 stomach would explode. Yeah. Ah. Um, good. That's There's what, probably good. other <laughs> health effects. I've, I've right, heard a similar thing. Detrimental. Yeah. Right. I've I've heard a similar thing about about non Christian substances we can't talk about on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sam. Sam. Um, I'm pretty sure that's that's true. I, I've said a lot of uh, <laughs> I, I've said a lot of uh, things that are untrue, but I'm you know. <laughs> I'm with, with with my science facts. I'm very shoot first, ask question later. <laughs> no, um, but like I, I can't remember what it was. There was um, speaking of non Christian related uh, <laughs> subjects. Whoa, I'll leave. Okay, the good transition. Steve, good transition. Good like, oh no, here we go. <laughs> no, um, uh, there was this thing. Um, uh, I talk about on uh, my cast a lot. I don't know why. Um, called uh it's called blow now it's not what you think it is it was uh it was this thing that you would add to any like normal drink and it would transform it into an energy drink um so it the idea would be like you have like an orange juice and you're like mm, i want to be uh i want to be uh you know energized i'm not getting enough taurine in my diet <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So, this, so this like it was like a powdery substance that um yeah it had like taurine it had all of those things and it was just whiskey. called blow like, like the drug it was just called blow correct um and so yeah when i was a teenager we would add that to monster oh my god that how did now, your heart not stop Someone because in the chat. Someone the in the chat also the caffeine that's needed to kill you <laughs> <laughs> happens <laughs> way after your stomach would explode, which is something we researched because of that thing. <laughs> doesn't uh, doesn't like the the B vitamin content cause? Oh, what is that called? Um, a niacin flush. I can't remember what it's called exactly, but wouldn't it cause that hyper elbowism? N no, hyper what? Hyper elbowism. <laughs> I don't know what that is, Tom. Really hyper elbowism. Elbow. Okay. Um, I just searched that in a Google. It says it looks like there aren't many great matches for your search. But you said you said hyper elbowism like so confidently. <laughs> that I was like, I was like, oh my god, I am so interested. Like that's like peak my my interest. Like really dumb sounding like medical things. <laughs> why why did I go to the hospital, oh, dude? I got hyper elbowism, man. Got a got a bad case of hyper elbowism. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hyperoboism like, sounds like the arm version of restless leg syndrome. <laughs> you just can't stop moving your arm. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I love it. I love it. Hyperoboism. Does does anybody here have restless leg syndrome? I was thinking like hyperoboism as in like the elbow bends farther than it's supposed to. <laughs> It's like double jointedness, right? Yeah. As, isn't it like a hyperextension? Yeah, probably. I, I don't. I'm really bad with like that. That's so like the anatomy side of things. The the guitarist in my band um, has hyper elbowism. Is, uh, yeah, uh, that and uh, he's a uh, he's like a physical therapy uh, doctor, um, and he's a uh, uh, what, what's the word for that? It's not kinesthesiologist. What, Kinesiologist. Is it? It might be. Wait, so, wait, what's the word you're looking for again? Um, what, the, the word for, for somebody who's like, 
a doctor in in the body, which sounds really sexual. Well, but... kinesiology is like <laughs> a nanobot. doctor of movement, so like body movement. So it might be kinesiology. I... No, no, I'm saying yeah. no. Chat saying no. Is it uh, osteopathic uh, doctor? Maybe I think it starts with a K. I don't know. Anyway, um, but he's crazy. Like he, he would be like, you know, we were we were out here recording our, our album um, in San Diego. And I remember telling him, like, for some reason, like, every time I reached over to get my, uh, like, uh, guitar um, from behind me, um, I would feel this really, like, sharp pain in my shoulder. And, and he, like, knew exactly what it was and, like, literally had, like, one of those rubber band things, like, on him. And he's like, all right, so what you do is, so, so you have a rotator cuff problem, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do this. And you're going to want to just, like, whoa, okay. Um, <laughs> Intense. Yeah, intense. But like one week of doing exactly what he said at exactly that moment, I never felt that pain again. And after yeah. he after he gave you the treatment, he's like, "Now, what insurance are you on?" Right, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I had I'm mixing your damn album. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, had to... I will purposely make you sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> you. I had uh, physical therapy for a little while, about like a year ago, for my back from uh, actually, ironically, <laughs> leaning. <laughs> I'm sorry. The image on screen. It's the it's the, the yeah, meme of the of like the little anime girl like putting nothing into a into a collection tin. Only it's Jules putting a kidney in there and saying caffeine, caffeine please. please. Caffeine, please. <laughs> oh god. Um oh shoot. Basically physical therapy is wonderful, is all I was trying to say. Yeah, definitely. I had um I had a knee problem for most of my life. Um I was a chunky lad as a lad. Was it hyperneism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like there's an image that goes in your head when you think about that of like the joint like twisting like completely the wrong way, but like in a comedic <laughs> cartoonish way. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, like Bonitis from Futurama. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. I'm I only he's got Bugs Bunny leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bonitis. Bo yeah, I um no, I had to, oh I, god, I he tas tw he, he Tasmanian twisted his nut. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that uh, no, I don't think that's no, the don't do that. Tasmanian twisted. His <laughs> I think we have a name for that. That's testicular torsion. Torsion. Yeah, no, yeah. it's called Tasmanian devil. <laughs> it's called yeah, it's called Tasmanian twist. <laughs> Stop naming your sex moves, Tom, for the love of God. <laughs> That's a, that's something like, like that's something like a playground like bullying thing like a purple nurple. Yeah, they don't have twister in Australia. I'm about to give I'm, I'm about to give this nerd a Tasmanian twist. <laughs> <laughs> You've got three options: either you give me your lunch money, you're going in the locker. It's a Tasmanian twist for the second week in a row, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yo, Warner Brothers, reach out to this. We can make this a thing. Yeah. No. Let's, uh, let's, no. Let's, let's <laughs> and now y'all know why he's called Family Jewels. Roll credits. And that's the story, everybody. <laughs> yeah, roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> and what we learned was the real testicular torsion was the friends we made. Along. <laughs> God, it reminds me of the uh, the uh, Venture Brothers episode where I think like I can't remember if it's Hank or Dean, but one of them gets testicular torsion, and Ugh. at the end they do like this like PSA about testicular torsion. I, uh, I love that this yeah. is where everything went. Cocaine, the cocaine energy drink. Yep, I've had that. I, I ironically, mean... or not ironically, it it burns on the way down. It actually like. There's uh fittingly, fittingly, it burns yeah, on the way. They, they had some <laughs> test of real cocaine just so they could make sure it was authentic. What well, yeah, Coca-Cola? The original recipe for Coca-Cola had cocaine in it. <laughs> I, I just, like if if you uh yeah if you were if you're doing cocaine for the purposes of researching the cocaine energy drink, you would be able to write off that cocaine, would you not? <laughs> that's a, that's I'm sure. Part. I'm sure there's an accountant out there who would just love you. Yeah, there's an accountant <laughs> in the Cay there's an accountant oh. in the Cayman Islands for that one. Every accountant I've ever had has loved me. I'm I'm one of those like, I like, <laughs> and, and yeah, that's me. If uh, I I really love like spreadsheets and like doing all my like I actually enjoy tax season because I like kind of it, it's kind of like the end. It's like the 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 roll the credits like look at your stats for the year for me, um, and I'm you know like the way I got through statistics in college was I I figured out ways to use my my Excel and 
Google Sheets skills to pretty much do all the problems for me. Um, which I would not recommend because I almost failed that class. So don't do that, everybody. <laughs> but um, uh, I had to go in and do an in-person test and I couldn't do it because I didn't have my, my Google Sheets where I just plugged in all the answers. <laughs> Um, that's where you write down the Google sheet on your hand and the <laughs> thumb working and everything. Why is it equal sum not working on my hand? <laughs> um, apply, yeah, damn I, you apply. Yeah, but I, I, I do think that I, I, I throw like CPAs and stuff for a loop because I do come across as like this, like, you know, edgy hot topic, you know, scene looking kid who, you know, who's pro probably his favorite band is Slipknot. Um, it's not, but thank you. Uh, it's like second but like the uh <laughs> but but then i'll just be like all right here's my here's my tax forms and like i'll just drop like a huge google doc sheet with a bunch of like variables that change all over the place and stuff i'm like all right let's go what can we say boys don't look at the cocaine don't <laughs> you, you gotta uh, <laughs> yeah. right off don't ask don't ask about the cocaine <laughs> if you ever if you ever have to change accountants you got to come into their office first day dressed like you were in the uh in the life is brutal video and oh then just like, God. and then, and then have like all of your like spreadsheets printed out and be like, all right, here's what I got. Dude, I love that video so much, man. My favorite is when Razor Fist is just like, <laughs> like J Neil, Neil Young or whatever the hell his name was. He was just like, wrote in and said, Slip, like, I only listen to real metal, like Slipknot. <laughs> it's the passing phase for you. You win. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that video is so good. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That was one of my favorite uh, favorite shoots ever. We, uh, for those that don't know, um, uh, Lyle, uh, formerly known as Lyle McDouchebag, now Lyle Rath, um, him and I had this idea um, to to shoot a uh, a YouTube film um, where what if you had a metal band that followed you around all day every day uh, and narrated your life with metal. And how like awesome that would sound at first, but then how, you know, obviously problematic it would become later in your life. Um, so we we had a lot of really cool uh, like, like Gerard was in it. Um, yeah. The the Tomars were in it. Uh, it was it was a really really fun shoot because like I I, I went I literally flew to California. I was, I was staying in Massachusetts at the, at the time, and we I stayed with Lyle and we just like recorded that whole thing in like a few days and then we just filmed it and it was so fun it was so fun it's uh, definitely just, one of the earliest videos i've seen of yours like that yeah. was a while ago <laughs> what was like what was the disclaimer after he won like this may sound like it's it's a curse but like but our, our legal team ensures us that it's not <laughs> yeah yeah our uh, our legal team uh oh, yeah what was it it was like this doesn't fall within the legal grounds of a, of a gypsy curse. of a curse yeah <laughs> <laughs> christ yeah, I um, yeah, I, I I miss doing uh, I miss doing um, like videos film. like that. Yeah, like um, I'm always I'm always uh, I don't know, I'm I'm always uh, envious of uh, people who get to do short. I I know it's it's probably creatively draining to to have to do like consistent, <clears throat> you know, comedy shorts and stuff like that. I think the uh the. I feel like the Patreon model works well with that, but that's that. Yeah. But like that only works if you already have something established. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. But like, uh, but doing it like if you if you have other content on the side and you sort of like save the highly produced stuff, like sort of specifically for Patreon, you know, like your patrons get all like the behind the scenes stuff. They get early access to the finished product, and you know, the uh, and you know, people are are paying for the Patreon like on a per video basis. Then that might be like a good way to go about it, but it's like, it, again, like you, you're also like maintaining another aspect to it. Whereas if you're going on a on like a per video basis, you can't dedicate all of your time to it because otherwise you're just going to keep falling deeper and deeper into the hole until that video finally comes out. Right. Yeah, and that's that. That's what's interesting to me about you know like, um, I'll never forget like early 2010s when animators pretty much just got like wiped off the platform of youtube because oh of the algorithm God. yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it's mostly just because of youtube requiring um a, a really set uh output yeah um and i was hoping that that would actually change things and in fact it feels like you know five years six years later it's actually worse now um like all sorts of different you know genres of of video um are kind of getting wiped off the platform um that can't 
essentially do you daily know, content. Uh, daily content. Yeah, like daily content is 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 seriously just like the way to go. Um, it's for basically, YouTube. like if if you're not putting out long videos daily that we can sh that that we can shove as many ads into as possible then you're you're not going to make it as a creator on YouTube. Yeah. Which, at which, least at least yeah. based on ads alone. Yeah. Which makes sadly. sense because like that's what makes YouTube the most money and you know yeah. you, like I feel like that's what I always have to help people realize is everybody's always like oh the algorithm and you know they're they're taking off their four tin foil hats and you know and like <laughs> oh, the algorithm is keeping my content for blah, 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 blah. but like it's it really does come down to the fact that like YouTube's a free platform and as most people should know in the year 2021 that if you use something that's free you are the product yep. <laughs> like there's it, there's some string attached like you you're yeah. like if it's free you're still technically giving something away and that's something is your time to watch ads well mm -hmm. you're you are being and your information advertisers yeah. like it, it, like i mean on twitch on youtube on anything like your attention is being sold to advertisers and what yep. you know people go with youtube because they're like well they can promise like we will get this many eyes on the advertisement that you want how much how many millions of dollars will you give us and the answer is a lot and i think like yeah i, I I feel like people get so caught up in the fact that there's just some like overarching Sauron of of YouTube like calling all the shots and pulling all the levers, but like it really does come like everything starts to make sense with YouTube at least. Like YouTube is actually an amazing platform, especially for uh, uh, discoverability. Like mm -hmm. Twitch, horrible for discoverability. Like you can't find anybody on Twitch like that you don't already know exists. But YouTube does such a good job of pushing videos um in your suggested based off you know all right i'm gonna put on my tinfoil hat but like the the <laughs> crazy you know reptilian algorithms that it, that that google uses of figuring out what you want before you you do um but i i i really think that people pe like everything makes sense as to what youtube does when you see it from the point of view of like how does youtube make the most money and that is that is how animators who put out like a like a video that gets 5 million views at the absolute best once every other month still doesn't get enough, as many ad viewers as a channel that uploads a video every day that gets a few like 10,000 views. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, it adds up to more. Um, but yeah. But yeah, just because of like residuals, people going back to those videos as well. Yeah, so you stay on the platform. That's the and other it, thing. Like, and, yeah, after you've watched, a, after you've committed to that long-form animation... Uh, you're probably going to go and do something else. But if you're like, oh, you know, that was a pretty short video. I'll watch another one. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I, don't one. I don't need that one on the internet. Just delete. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's a picture of, uh, of Jules the pile of cocaine in a table yeah, that says please, it's a write-off, I swear. It's a Photoshop photo. I should I should preface that. It's a Photoshop photo. Yeah, if you can't tell, I'm not on the MAGFest. Or no, that's not MAGFest. That's Com Bravo, I think. There's a table well, on his well, guitar. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, for the for the audio listeners who can't see the picture. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, sorry. But now, like, it's uh, from what I've seen is is like it's good to do like daily videos if you can on YouTube. It's just really hard to freaking make that happen. But mm -hmm. um, another thing that like that type of content gets you like smaller daily videos or weekly, as it were, is not every video has to pop off. You know, yeah. like you can have a video that kind of sucks or like, you know, it's just like, oh, I need to put something out. And at times it like, it's like, ah, that's not, that's not good. You don't want to just put something out there to put something out there. But like it, at certain points in time, it's just, if you're enjoying the content that you're making, I think that overall, that's the most important thing. Um, especially like, especially if you're doing it as a hobby, like you yeah. putting out your stuff is most important. Once it turns from hobby into possibly a career, um, it's also, it's very important to remember to keep that, uh, mentality of, Hey, this is still a hobby. Even though I am able to live off of this, I, I need, like you, you got to where you were by having a good time. You might as well continue having a good time doing it. That's, yeah. that's like my philosophy though. No, no, I, uh, and I a hundred percent agree with that. Like it's, and, and I think first and foremost, it is a hobby. Yeah. You should not go into content creation expecting to make money. God, no. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, I mean, yes. And then also, especially now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Every, now. 
And like I said that five years ago when people would bring that up and be like, is it a good time? I'm like, well, five years ago was better and this is harder. And now yeah, looking back on it, I'm like, I don't know how to that's, tell that's people. Like, like it's, it's only going to get worse like but as, that's, as that's time whole, goes on. That's the, um, that's the, the, uh, I think I think it's Buddhist. It's the the best time to plant a tree is ten years ago. The next best time is right now. Yep. Like, and like, and I'll I'll always tell people like, give it a try, have fun with it. Like, yeah. like, and um, my three keys are have fun, moderation, and consistency, especially on Twitch, because like, you have fun. That's simple enough. Moderation means you don't do it too freaking much to burn yourself out and consistency. You do it just enough in order to make sure that people know where you are. And then mm -hmm. of course there's always the fourth step, which is luck. And that's mm -hmm. not what everybody wants to hear, but yeah. it's not like cocaine. Person. No, it's not cocaine. <laughs> Pull up that picture of Jules again. <laughs> uh, no, don't bring it up. I have regrets. <laughs> But uh, but no luck. Luck is a major aspect in that, um, <laughs> especially nowadays. Like it's absolutely. It's, it's pretty much like back when when like uh, like especially when when like John and I were starting. Like Stephen, you got into it around like what two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Uh, yeah, two thousand nine. <laughs> I, I okay. Yeah, let, yeah, that sounds. So, nice. so that, that that's early enough as well. There yeah. weren't nearly as many people making videos like that like making like videos i'm trying to think of, like how to put this like let's play videos or like you know a few people were, were like videos vlogging. weren't as popular because they weren't as easy yeah. to do back then yep. yeah and like and I, the... and I got i got my start from from uh for making machinimas which not a lot of people were doing either because at that point capture technology like didn't really exist yeah at least and, not like, commercially YouTube um, really pushed the Let's Play stuff whenever Minecraft kind of took over the algorithm. Um, yep. I can't remember exactly when it was, but like, I mean, I started in like 2015. I was just doing something very different. Like I wasn't yeah. doing like video game stuff. And I was the only, like, I was probably the only person drumming on Twitch at that time consistently. Like there were people who did it before me. I'm not like the godfather of uh, freaking drumming on Twitch, but um, people like... I don't think anybody did it consistently, like on a schedule and continually while talking and doing stuff. So I was, I was an exceedingly niche product. And that is, that is why uh, like I attest my growth to that was because I was doing something that literally nobody else was doing. <laughs> and that's hard to do nowadays because it's oh, so yeah. saturated, yeah. like yep. super saturated. What did you say about like, about not necessarily like copying other people that you like, but you know, kind of um, putting a twist on it. I always talk about, um, uh you know how um <clears throat> you know how uh everybody says like you know the reason why you exist is because you were the fastest sperm out of all of them um technically second fastest exactly so technically the second one because the the first sperm actually usually breaks the outer layer of the um the egg um and then dies doing so and actually the the one that wins is the one that takes all the credit for it essentially that first one that, that yeah, first, first one is the ultimate bro Right. The, well, well, uh, you know, some might. But say it's the like, but, but what, what you're died. saying is like, it, like the first one kind of laid the groundwork, and the second one more or less pioneered it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, a lot of a lot of the time, you'll see in these niches that like it wasn't the absolute first person mm -hmm. who who become. It, it's the person that that kind of took that idea and manipulated it in a way that. Um, that that works better and i feel like it takes so much like mental um i, I don't know j just to, to come up with that idea in the first place it, it, it takes so much energy and stuff that it requires almost like multiple parties to kind of um help kind of mold like uh like a niche into what it like to be. it's iteration yeah yeah it's every every time yeah. that you you change something you iterate it it's the same with technology it's like whenever AI a company learning. Is, yeah. it's whenever a company touts like being first on something i'm like okay yeah so <laughs> you also have like, your competitors right. who, who you're also have your competitors who who did it later and therefore did it and, and not, not it's not necessarily a direct correlation but they did it later and were able to improve upon things so they're doing it better yeah exactly, exactly. and that's, that's that's definitely the the whole like 
uh, counter argument to like, oh, like I don't have any original ideas. Like, oh, like nothing I do is is you know whatever. Like I think what's what's really cool, and I, I tell this to to my music students, is that like like literally like if you were to one hundred percent copy a song, you know, like like if you were to cover a song and not change anything. The chances of you sounding exactly like the original song is almost none. It will always still be, uh, you know, derivative in some in some interesting way, just because of the limitations that you have. And I think that a lot of people like get stuck in that like that stuck area of just like, oh, like I don't know what I don't know what my thing is. I just don't want to be a copy of this person. I, you know, like. But like, dude, like the best thing to do, and what I think all of us have done, it is just you know at one point just decided I I like I don't have it all figured out, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try it. You Let's know? do it. Yeah, yeah. To to expand upon that uh, a little bit more, or rather to uh, rather to compound on that a little bit more, um, like even the person who made the song, if they were to play it over again, wouldn't sound the exact same as they did the first time. Maybe right. they'll like switch up, like like switch up a note, or or they sound different, or like like they they sing differently, or they're using a different guitar, like may, like just like little details like that. Just God, won't... soul man, or they yeah. just oh, had four hundred and sixty one milligrams of caffeine, and they yeah. Sound <laughs> yeah, and they played at double speed. How yeah. much cocaine did you? <laughs> so you do this to yourself? No one, no one brought that up. <laughs> I'm creating. I'm I'm listen. Listen, I have he regrets. He's taking control of his, I his brand. Have, I also have unregrets. <laughs> He's manifesting <laughs> destiny for himself, which whatever, apparently whatever is related to cocaine. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's family jewels into the cocaineverse. Yeah, listen, we've all had a good laugh, and that's all I care about. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Let's not worry about the cocaine. Listen, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that cocaine. <laughs> Don't worry about the cocaine CPA. Like how it says not drugs in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we we're talking about Lyle before. Remember when he had his uh his uh movie review show and his character's name was not drugs? Oh my god. The uh was it was that spoilers ahead? Yeah. 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 I actually well, I, I just uh I just did a thing with Lyle. He's doing um a, a music uh Yeah, a sounds music. goodish. Sounds goodish. Um and it's it's a really cool idea because it's it's his whole like premise is just like there's tons of people on the internet that are gonna say they're gonna say a bunch of modes and tell you a bunch of pedals that you don't have and I'm not that guy I'm an idiot just like you <laughs> yeah. I'm you, yeah, you, you, you need to be taught how to do these things from the perspective of an idiot <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I'm that idiot <laughs> the, it's really the, good. The, 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 like the, the guitar shoved halfway up his ass exactly exactly yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I would love to. I I've been um, I would love to do something related to like content with like education and teaching music and stuff. Um, mostly because like that's, I I have a hard time with like um one on one teaching. I don't know. I don't know like how you guys have if you guys have ever had any uh education backgrounds, but uh. Um, I, I actually prefer to kind of just be like the dad at the front of the classroom and just be like, all right, idiots, so open up your textbooks to, I don't know, and take some, I don't know, to test this tomorrow, you know? <laughs> 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 I So, like, I, I really do enjoy that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do the, um, I do like this uh, music theory uh, thing with uh, 8-Bit Music Theory, Sab, and uh, Carlos. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um that's that's literally this whole thing um picture of the picture of elmo like uh going from looking at fruit and then like a pile of white powder and then just dipping his nose into the powder it's and everyone it's like, trying to get off drug drugs as a topic and jules just face planting right into drug topics every, every time jules laughs at an on-screen image tom has to fill in the audio <laughs> listeners to what is happening yeah. every single time i'm just not even gonna look i'm not even gonna look <laughs> i cannot i cannot i gotta look i gotta look but um i i, I don't know i i feel like i <laughs> i i I like that that idea because that also like it, it's helpful to the to the community of people and that's something that I feel like I'm definitely a give backer, you know, and I feel like all of us are in a way like I, I feel, you know, all five of us are, you know, whether we want to admit it or not are successful in some way and 
you know, and just the way that we talk and stuff, want to want to help other people out. And I, I definitely like, I like the idea of kind of uh, providing that that advice for people. And that's why I like doing like the panels and stuff. And um, but you know, there's also something to say about joking about cocaine and. <laughs> <laughs> one of my uh, one of my favorite things I've read about um, success is that the people that are at the top or whatever you want to call the successful people, they will almost 99% of the time be willing to give you the advice that helped them to get to where they are. Like they, like uh, that's why it's always like ask people who are successful, like how they did it. And they will more than likely want to tell you because they want, they don't like people that are like truly successful, <laughs> people that are truly successful. Um, they don't want to keep it all for themselves. They want to, you know, do yourself, charity work. I, they want, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I'm going to put uh, everybody down. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but not like that, like never be afraid to ask somebody like a question, you know, um, sometimes you'll get the, 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 the behind that won't want to talk about it and just be like, Oh, you're just trying to ride my coattails, but they're not, they're not yeah. worth it. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like just go for it. Like just, don't be afraid to like send that DM to somebody and ask them, um, like, how did you get into what you got into? How did you, uh, <laughs> not what Jules has been getting into this podcast, but how, how, you, did, you know you bend, I mean? how did you bend your elbows that way? Can you? I, <laughs> I, I am you hyper. El, I am hyper elbow deep, deep into elbow cocaine elbow? right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, please, we're trying to get away. We're trying to run from the cocaine. How how is your how do your testicles tort to tor 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 <laughs> How do they tort? <laughs> this how do your tor 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 <laughs> to tort tor to tort to tort I I think uh one of the other things that people generally I don't I don't want to say try to go for but as it sort of put on a pedestal is like the fleeting uh the fleeting success of something going viral. Like what? Yeah. Not 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 like your brand is as as a whole going viral, but like one particular like thing that you did going viral, yeah. because that is like that is that's like that's a quick high and an immediate drop off. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like Jules, I love you, man. <laughs> Just like caffeine. <laughs> Oh my god! Just like a just like a venti blonde rose from Starbucks. Get your you know, <laughs> you know that's not what Tom was you know, going uh, for. The first I'm looking at chat right now. They didn't think you were going to go to the to the forbidden substance. They th they thought you were going to doorbells. No, I was going to talk about doorbells. You know, one of my favorite my my uh, I don't know why, but something that lives rent free in my brain <laughs> is that time, Stephen, when you were uh, you you were doing a breakfast stream. And uh, we, I can't remember. I made some joke, and you just kind of went serious, and you're like, "Listen, doorbell man." I, like, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds and right. That yeah, that 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 voice clip lives rent free in my head, and I, I think about it every once in a while. Well, um, I'm gonna start charging you rent. So if you could just take <laughs> out me five dollars a month. <laughs> that's a pretty my short rent. Yeah, just, uh, just sub to my Twitch. Well, why, that's not well, a, it's a clip. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Jules, that'll be twelve hundred dollars <laughs> a month. A Can month. you imagine that? Just like you go to you go to stay at somebody's house and like, all right, so rent is one thousand. Um, no, you know what? How about you pay me rent for me staying in your house? I tell you what, if that was the case, I'd be paying Jules a lot in residuals for the do it, do it stuff that I used to freaking do all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I would owe Jules a lot of money for witnessing him spray himself in the face. <laughs> With the hairspray. Oh um, man, that was the only that was the, the only time I've ever done that. Yeah, that's one of perfect. that's one of like my favorite things that I've ever s witnessed a, another human do. <laughs> and I, I just it makes me feel closer to you than I even actually am because yeah. we've never actually spent a lot of time together in person. But when I think back to Jules, I'm like, I don't know, I know him pretty well. I. I Watched him shoot himself in the face with hairspray. I'm pretty sure we're buddies. <laughs> well, like, in some ways, in some ways uh, I mean, you know me better than I do because I didn't see it because I couldn't see. So, I mean, you saw that very... <laughs> you felt it, though, in a way that none of us could. Like, yeah. it, like it's it's a story unraveling itself. Just the the 
direct stare you give to the camera as the stream of hairspray goes right over your eyes. Like, it's incredible. The, the level yeah. of commitment necessary to do that was exceptional. And I'm so glad that you did it, even if it was not on purpose. It was not on purpose, I will say. If there's ever any question, like, still, like, among the among the people... Um, <laughs> If that was a thing, no, it was not intentional. It was literally a a crossover of brain neurons that uh, short circuited. Of I have to look at the camera and look at look as douchey as possible, but also uh, spray my hair at the same time. And uh, he missed. I missed. I don't think I've ever seen you that confident before, Jules. Really? <laughs> Except for that moment right before you spray yourself in the. Freaking eyes. Well, and then I was never that confident again. <laughs> <laughs> I learned my lesson. Speaking of uh, speaking of interaction between Steven and Jules, uh, one of my favorite things recently was a highlight that Jules just put out where on Steven's breakfast stream, he's like, hey, uh, hey Jules, how you doing? Are you, are you eating good? Are you getting enough sleep? And Jules just starts saying, like, I don't eat breakfast. I also don't get enough sleep. And Steven just goes, okay, please stop sharing information. <laughs> <And> that, <laughs> <laughs> Not that freaks me <laughs> off, dude. And I'm adding like the, the bird wow uh, emo. I'm just yeah. like, I did not get enough sleep, and oh god, so please stop, it. please stop sharing information, Jules. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think the message was was I am not getting enough sleep, and then bird wow, <laughs> just with that little like <laughs> the little bird going like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh but, man, my, it's, my it's, sincerest uh, hope is that everyone can get adequate sleep. Yeah, I it's a concept. Know. I don't know how well John slept last night, but I didn't because I was up till six a.m. playing Minecraft with John in Maryland. Yeah, I I was up until nine a.m. I think. Wow. Uh, uh, I was working on um a, a pr the project I was telling you guys about before the stream that I will not uh, I will not yeah. ruin. Um, if I'm up at nine a.m. or if I'm up to 9 a.m. There's a problem. If I'm up at 9 a.m., there's a problem too. Because, uh, like, yeah. good lord, man, that's I, I that's could, insane. I could tell like how many of my watchers in the chat and how many aren't by like, <laughs> like like everybody's just like, oh my god, Jules nine, and everyone else is like, yeah, that's typical, Jules. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, I, I, oh god. No, I was gonna say um, there was a, a phenomenon that happened um, just the other day. On Discord, I have um I have it show what games I'm playing, which is a mistake, obviously. But you know, whatever. Oh, this story. Um, it, it's 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 content, you know. Like if it, and and this was content. Um, so myself, uh, Alpharad, and uh, Ouija the God, like all these guys, we were all playing uh, Honey Pop. Um, <laughs> know what Honey Pop is. Uh, it's a match three game, um, with a lot of uh, anime plot, if you will. Um. Titties. Uh, for those that <laughs> heavy, 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 heavy. I feel like he was waiting around. for me to jump in there for some reason. I, I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling Man. up the, the he scale heavy, heavy quote because... marks around plot. Yeah, Jules very... literally brought sex, drugs, and rock and roll to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you expected. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, so I opened it and I left it open. And I went to sleep, you know, as I do. Because, like, yes, I go to sleep at ridiculous hours, but I'll have you know, I get a very consistent eight hours of sleep every night. Otherwise, I would not function as a human being. Um, every day, you mean? Yeah, pretty... Wait, what did I say? You said every night. Every night. Yeah, true, 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 true. Every afternoon, I get eight hours of sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so what my entire community saw was that I... Well, I woke up to people being like, well, Jules is on hour 14 of a honey pot marathon. <laughs> <laughs> going all night, going strong. And they're, they're, like, like, they're in my general chat, like counting down. They're like, oh my God, are we going to make it to 14 hours? He's been playing honey pot for 14 hours. <laughs> the stamina on this man. How is he going this long? Nice. Oh. <laughs> I don't know when this happened, but I figured the next time you appeared on camera, you should have gotten, like, a fake arm that made one arm look super buff. <laughs> oh, my God. And one arm just have hyper-elbowism. 
<laughs> that's how I do it. It's hyper elbowism. That's the only way it's you hyper elbowism. Yeah, for fourteen hours. Anyway, I love going to church. How about you, <laughs> <laughs> Stephen? What's your favorite hymn? <laughs> oh man, I'd have to think about that one. Bo. I get it. Himbo. <laughs> oh my God. He got it. He got it. It works. All the credits. I got the joke. I'm trying my best, <laughs> man. God bless it. I'm waiting oh. for the hymn. I, 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 Circle I still... Be Unbroken? So, Circle yeah, Be Unbroken is really good, but also I'm now influenced because of Bioshock. Because it was yes! in Bioshock. And, like, I knew the song before it was in Bioshock, obviously, but, like, when it came up, I was like, oh, that's really clever. And then now, when I think of him, so I'm like, oh, yeah, Bioshock. Yeah, Circle Be Unbroken from Bioshock. Well, <laughs> uh, wait, from the original Bioshock or... or, or... Yeah, Infinite. Okay, yeah, it, it, Infinite makes a lot more sense considering all the, the religious uh, overtones in that game. Yeah, but that, that scene was powerful. Like, the that whole... The the part where Elizabeth sings that it just that you know honestly I, I was gonna say that's like the standout moment of the game for me but I played that game when it came out and there's still a lot of moments from that game that I that I remember very vividly that's one of them I only um, played that game a few years ago maybe two years ago and that's why I can still vaguely remember it <laughs> last it's, year for me I definitely did not remember the name of that song. Yeah, it's uh, I think I think Adriana did a cover of uh, "Circle Be Unbroken" and had Elizabeth from Bioshock like uh, as her as her image and stuff, and it's very good. Adriana happens to be a <sighs> she's she's okay. <laughs> I can't I can't simp too hard. Next day, I mean you can. Next day, <laughs> next day Jules is found dead. <laughs> I remember I was I was I was uh I was crap talking uh Adriana in, in a breakfast dream and this was like I think like this was like mid December and Steven was just like um Jules uh quick reminder Christmas is in a week. Uh <laughs> I'm just I'm just out here helping people out. You were looking out for me. I appreciate you, that. You show you show up to my stream, I'm gonna try and do my best. You, and you do a very good job, and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I it, it's. I was thinking about it today because you were talking about today, Stephen, about how it, it's wild how so many people, um, how many people like assume that all the people in TRG are like super tight like we're all best friends and we've all just like grown up together and everything is just like amazing and happy i mean it is but like um and we are all best friends and we all grew up together but uh <laughs> no uh like it it is it is wild how like especially like yeah like steven like you and me and i i feel like a lot of other people uh only know each other through coliseum it's it's it skews the audience's perception when they see people hanging out for 12 hours a day for four days straight. Yeah. Well, because also... they, they see that and they assume, wow, these people know each other extremely well. When in reality, we're hanging out for like the first time. I'm like, yeah, I don't know any of these people. Yep. That was first Colise well, second Coliseum, the one that I was at the first time. That was the first time meeting most, if not, well, most of you at least, because like, I knew Jules. Um, but I, I didn't know Tom, I didn't know Steven or, uh, or John, like closely before that. Yeah. yeah. I, um, that, that was like Jack too. Like, I remember I, I, I literally like grabbed Jack by the ear and I was like, Hey, you're coming with me to this Coliseum thing. <laughs> Go for it. Um, and you like Jack literally knew like nobody, you know, like at least like I knew TRG through, you know, through controllers, um, because Adriana, uh, before like prior to prior to family saurus lore um uh you know was giving prizes and stuff and was friends with uh um Masse. and Masse. yeah 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 um but yeah so it i i think the other thing is i think it, it skews our own perceptions too because like when we're all together 
working towards like a common goal, you know, be it what what it is, you know, charity by doing D and D sessions where people are screaming alimony. Um, yeah. it, it, like it, it really, it really almost just kind of like it's like the best possible situation for a bunch of people to become very close friends because you know everybody is everybody is doing like a non ego driven common goal, which I think is really cool. Um, I think there's something to study there. There's some like psychological study there. You know, like the likelihood of like how how deep and long wrong uh wrong verbs uh how 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 um invested friendships uh yeah phrasing sorry uh will will become if like the original goal is something that's like that that's like that charity or something like that um it's but, certainly yeah, it, it's certainly an interesting way to form friendships yeah definitely it's, yeah. it's an it's an unconventional way that most people won't get a chance to experience like there's a very big difference from hey you're going to this party you're going to meet some people and hang out with them to hey you're going to this house you're going to live with them for four days also you're on camera in front of thousands of other people yes. and you need to you know entertain and joke around with these other people that you don't really know but you'll figure it out right yeah and i think that that's where everybody was like i mean Working Anybody, towards a common goal, too. Well, working like, towards a common goal and also just kind of like, all right, things are going to be awkward. Like, like it's not like, a, oh, I hope things aren't awkward. Like, we're all just like, you know what? Things are probably going to be kind of awkward. Like, we, we all just kind of accepted that and we're like, all right, let's just make the best of it. Rather than, like, worry the whole time about, um, you know, like, oh, no, we're going to be on camera. Like, oh, no, I'm going to be doing content with people I don't really know. Oh, no. It's like, it, it oh, almost no. like takes all of the, uh, oh, no. It'll take all the anxiety out of it when there isn't, like potential for different options to happen too you know and that's that's something that like i i always try to try to tell people who, who struggle with anxiety is like a lot of it comes down to like you you have so many options you know usually that's the case especially in this time where you're not forging for berries and hunting mammoths you're you're you know you you have so many different I mean, things speak for yourself <laughs> true i don't know what you do in your free time tom i i i hope that's what you do honestly um you might know too much now <laughs> maybe i i'm starting to look like a mammoth to tom <laughs> um yeah i i, I feel like uh yeah a, bi a big a big part of it is like just kind of like not knowing like, like oh no like what do i do to avoid the worst possible common or the w most the worst possible scenario and i feel like that was a situation in which we were all just like all right worst thing is things are going to get a little awkward and you know what Let's do it. <laughs> you know, like let's let's do it in front of thousands of people. It'll be great. And I think and I, because I think, I, yeah, I, I think it's also a testament to the the group of people that we have that yeah. um, you know, things have consistently over the past few years went so smoothly for the event, mm -hmm. and then also that friendships have actually been formed. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I I can I can only speak personally, but I've never had any. I've never had any weird uncomfortable moments with anyone like off camera just everyone is just a true blue great person i think it's one of the reasons it works so well it's not like oh you know the the group is great but watch out for jerry you know yeah. watch out for jerry because jerry eh. you know it's not like that everyone's just everyone's great and it's like it, it, jared it's <laughs> Just watch out for Jared. Yeah. It's it's also uh like it's almost like with the on camera personalities, because so many of us just kind of did content creation, not really making a character out of it, just kind of like being ourselves, our on camera personalities are just like us with more energy. And then right. off camera, it's like, okay, here this is how he normally is. This is that on camera persona. A little bit more subdued. Oh, I'm still loud as frick off camera. Yeah, too. yeah. Like y'all like, know that, right? But like, we, we but, stuck but, but I mean, in like a, uh, a whisper room at Nam and made him scream. <laughs> you could hear me. You could hear me through it, kind of. I think I think yeah. uh, Emil would destroy the actual booth. Yes, we, we, we yes we did we did this we 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 actually like recorded who the loudest person was. Yeah, wasn't I'm, it Tyler? It was I'm Tyler, pretty sure yeah. Tyler beat us by one. By one decibel. One decibel. <laughs> yeah. When uh, when uh, was this competition? 
Uh, well, it was it was it was a 2019 TRG Coliseum when you were uh when you would just had to or like you were tired as hell the entire Coliseum, so like it makes sense why you didn't know about it. Oh, is that the the where I slept through one entire day of TRG Coliseum? Yes, yes, I think so. Yeah. Oh, didn't know I missed that. I'm I'm amazed you did because oh my god. It was very loud. Well, were did you sleep at the at the house during that time, or, or were you at home? Uh, I definitely slept at the house, but I can I tell you which day it was? I have no idea. <laughs> it was the first one, I believe, because I remember. I, well, like the the actual competition, I think was either the the third or the second or third day. I think because it was we we usually do three, right? Yeah, I left right after the third day, so I think it was on the second day that we did that competition. Pretty certain, but I can't remember. Yeah, we did yeah. three the first time, four the second, and then we've done three with the online one. Yep. Man, that that the first uh, Coliseum that I went to, I, I'm frick. I, I will always remember the uh, the first time that me and John kind of did like a uh, like a team game thing, and that was uh, in Mario Party. I think it was two or one. I can't remember. And uh, I think it was six, actually. Oh, so oh, uh, Mario Party because we were insert. Wario and Waluigi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was like it Seven. was just so good because that was the I think that was the first time that I had ever actually hung out like with John, and it was just it was just like we just got along perfectly, and yeah. uh, we've been friends ever since. I freaking love that. I think I even Seven? said like yeah, partway Seven. yeah partway through. I'm like Jared, we need to hang out more. I think is what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like it was just it was just a really good moment because um I mean I had never really met up with anybody in the TRG group before and it was just really nice. It was a really awesome experience. And now and now you're on a podcast. With, yeah, with now. Isn't it weird how life works? And you have to you, now you kinda have to weigh your options of was this the biggest mistake of my life? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe. <laughs> Harder yeah. to get out of now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're nine months in. I might as well stick around. I mean, here I am talking about cocaine in front of 2,000 people. There you go. <laughs> I mean, come on, Jules. This isn't the first There what go? <laughs> there, what, what is the... There you go what? There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like in, it's like the yada, yada, yada in Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah yada, 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 and you're doing a podcast. Yeah, there you you're go. You're talking about cocaine in a podcast. <laughs> That's step three, and then step step four is profit, right? Like step three right. is the, the question mark, <laughs> question mark, question mark. Question mark. Yeah. yeah. Yada yada. Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know. I, I am. I am so. I'm so grateful for uh, for TRG in general because um, I I've always kind of been you know I've been doing this for for way too long. But yeah, like I started in I started in 2010. Um, so, you know, not as long as, you know, Steven or a lot of the people in TRG, um, but still, um, in, in a completely different hemisphere of, uh, of YouTube, you know, cause like, yeah, gaming related, but I feel like my stuff is always kind of geared more towards like musicians who might have had a gaming background. Um, and I felt like the communities, uh, there weren't many communities if, any i think there there might have been a few but i wasn't really like breaking into any of them um and the ones that i did were like kind of small and you know not not always the most like helpful of each other's growth you know everybody was still kind of like chasing numbers and chasing subscribers and trying to get to that you know point at which they can get their ad sense and make the money and stuff like that but um yeah. there's been an overall feeling of almost just like with everybody in 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 trg extended universe um it's really been at least i saw this with people like emil and Masse because those are the first two people in the in in the scene that that i really got to know um that that wasn't really the case that it was really out of a passion for what they did and everything else that came after it was a bonus you know um and that was something that was very much in line with what i felt so um, getting to kind of almost like cultivate the entire thing with something like Coliseum, I think has been, um, it, it's just been an absolute blessing for, for me and I'm sure a lot of other people. Um, 
I think it's uh, I think it's really cool, um, and I've always been grateful to to be a part of that. I'm just really glad that like the entire group as a whole is just really chill. Like overall, there's been really no problems, no nothing. We're just all doing our things, and we come together as a as a team for good every now and then. It's kind of like it's kind of like some weird wholesome Avengers or something. Like I don't know. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> chill is the wrong word for a group that has loudness convers- contests and. You know, well, you know what I mean. I'm t- I'm talking about like the overarch, like Tom the overarching. screaming buff, buff Isabel or whatever, and yeah, man, and like, dude, that crap yeah. was funny. And Emil, <laughs> Emil just yelling about everything in general, and then John yelling at Emil. So it's a normal just day. Vibing. Well, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. It's like that's that's like that's the normal that's the normal thing it's like it's not really chill and it's made me realize that chill isn't actually like what i want like i just i want to have fun. fun with my friends you know fun wanna, is the wanna, right word yeah i want to i want to scream and but 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 like chill is something that like i feel like you're always kind of like, like i just want friends that are chill man like i just want to like i just want to chill i just want to vibe dude but like i feel like the the most memorable times of my life is when i've been like the opposite of <laughs> chill and opposite chill. Of vibe. <laughs> Like we're all just screaming and just having a blast, you know, just screaming about a Mario Party game or something that, like, you know, at the end of the day doesn't matter. But we're all living in the moment, no phones in sight. <laughs> like, and and that's that's like the best part of it all is is like just the amount of the amount of good times that this this group has been able to have, uh, both together and in like small groups, kind of like this here. It's just been really fun. It's been super good, and um, I'm just frick, I'm just happy to be a part of it. It's fun. Yeah, I think that's that's just kind of a, a like a, a an eye opening thing for me, you know, realizing that like it is actually like the high energy groups of people that I that I feel like I have the the best the best times with, rather than the people that I just like. You know, everybody's just like, you know, man, life is hard, man. Let's just hang out and play some honey pop, like you know, like, <laughs> like I mean, I, not not to say that like my other groups aren't like aren't high energy. I mean, you know, like Alpha Rad has made a whole career out of screaming at smash bros characters and you know uh making like crazy shorts and stuff but like um there's i i feel like when when you're chill it's almost like harder to like like if you're like screaming and you're confidently like you know yelling and and making jokes and trying to make each other laugh and being okay with when sometimes the jokes don't land and that's fine we'll just move on and stuff like that i feel like you get a real sense for the people that you're around yeah. Um, and now let me, let me rephrase. I meant chill more as the, there's no problems type of deal. Like I love the energy that everybody has. It's the, uh, it's, uh, I was meaning more so in that, uh, aspect, I think. How dare you, Jared? I, I know. Knew, <laughs> I knew that you were going to bring drama to this. I knew <laughs> that Steven was right when he said, Jerry is the one you have to look at. Oh, <laughs> oh God. It's, it's, oh man, it's, it's all gone to hell. Oh, oh, Jerry. The TR- so Sorry, guys. Oh, we have to Jerry. cancel the TRG averse. It's so funny because my, <laughs> my mom actually calls me Jerry, so it's really funny. That really? That. Yeah. I specifically chose, I was like, quickly, think of a name that's not any of the names that are involved with the people. <laughs> and my uh, brain was like, Jerry, there's no Jerry. A mate, you picked Jerry when there being a John and a Jared. I'm impressed. <laughs> I was willing, I was willing to, to roll the dice, and I got kind of close. But there it's all good. I just won't tell my mom. It'll be okay. Just don't tell your mom. <laughs> just don't tell your mom anything. It's just, it's just, just like you subconsciously go to one of our names like, yeah, you got to look out for that Todd. 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 Look out for that Todd. Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Todd and Julia are by far the worst members of the TRG universe. Um, that's why they are not invited back to any future events. <laughs> Have you guys seen um, what, uh, uh, Being John Malkovich? No. Oh my god, there's a part in the beginning where um, John, Cusack, John Cusack plays like this, uh, this puppeteer um, and he's like kind of kind of awkward, but like he introduces himself to this to this woman, um, beginning uh, by by saying like I have this really really like wild like talent where I can just uh, guess your name um, just out of nowhere. Uh, um, and so and then she's just like oh oh cool uh, like you know what's uh, what's my name and he goes oh well you know you look like this. Uh, you 
<laughs> like, going through like everyone is what? like watching her face for the reaction. Yeah, and, and like, yeah, her face is like uh, like shaking and down. Uh, 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 mm, 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 like, and then and then he finally gets it. And she's like, "Wow!" <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it seems like you... the the least effective cold reading I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, I know. Hey, it works. It's not a speed run. He got there. <laughs> Talking about everyone tonight just makes me... I mean, it makes me miss everyone, but it also makes me lament uh, the inability to have another in-person Coliseum this year. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that I'll be really, really looking forward to next year. And I'm looking forward to the event this year and seeing what... Uh, I mean, everyone does. I'm, I'm personally, and this probably makes sense, I'm personally most interested in seeing um, the bumpers that each individual person has to make. Because that was like a highlight for me last year is like just getting a chance to see what everyone came up with creatively on their own. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking forward to this year. <laughs> well, let's we're open up. Oh, when uh, John Marilyn and I were playing Minecraft last night, we were talking about how uh, how <laughs> we're never going to beat the film student in terms of quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> I, I know how to make the camera do, but that's not that's not the entire part of it. Coming up with something entertaining and fun and unique. No, but I mean, like my my favorite one of my favorite comments in like the compilation of the bumpers from twenty twenty was like, uh, everybody like doing like fun or silly things, and it's like Stephen for your Emmy consideration. <laughs> yeah. Me and Mao actually had a conversation about that the other day because you know we're getting closer to Coliseum, and Mao's like, you know that you're gonna have to make something that is at least as good as the thing from last year and i was like <laughs> i know she's like so you better start thinking about it she's like because you can't get off the hook you can't just like you know half-ass it you have to do something and i'm like i know so i'm thinking about it are uh, you gonna start a controversy thing. again this time with your with your video is that the plan i'm gonna try not <laughs> what controversy did he do, start? You don't did you not remember the other lamp video? There, I'll quickly touch on this. At, right after I released the the lamp bumper, it just so happens that someone had made a another short film unrelated to our group, unrelated to everything, uh, and they had released it probably like ten. I think like ten to twelve days before we released ours. And it's eerily similar. I mean, like, eerily similar. And they released theirs first. They were, uh, it was a smaller channel. I think the channel itself had, like, 200 subscribers or less. There's no ch no way I could have even known about it. But whenever I watched it, I was like, man, this is really, really similar. Because it involves uh, a lamp that is evil, that uh, ends up turning red, and then they unplug it, and it kills them. You know, it's like all of this crazy stuff that's, extremely extremely similar but it was all just a complete coincidence jesus and huh. then i Do you the never guy really talked this on like one of the first disc onlys the guy um the guy made like a drama video <laughs> oh and man I, and i'm like uh, that's yeah. just that's not my scene and i was like yeah. no i'm not doing this so i made a video that explained the situation and then instead encouraged my audience to go check the guy's stuff out because he was really good and he was young i think he was like 19. i was like you know go check this guy out he's doing short films this stuff's incredible for his age and i tried to turn it into a positive thing but yeah it was it was creepily similar and like i understand how it got there because his thing was like he's in quarantine what's the device in the room that he can use as a horror film lamp okay how do we make the lamp scary well uh it turns red okay that's one thing uh, we tried to pull it from the wall, and it's still on. I came up with the same stuff because, of course, I did. Um, but yeah, it was it was one anxiety-induced night because I would, went to sleep and I had checked Twitter, and someone was like, "Hey, did you copy the short film?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> oh, and boy. then it was an entire oh, video that was like, "Stephen George has copied my short film," and I'm like, "I don't even know who you are, man." <laughs> uh, I I think I think the the big thing too is just like. Especially with younger creators now, I feel like that's the example that's been set to be able to deal with things like this. Oh, absolutely. Like, 
yeah and, and like you know some people I, I saw some people just now in the chat saying like well it wasn't that bad it wasn't like a whole drama thing it's like the the, the right thing to do is to reach out privately first you know like if, yeah. if you if you make a video out of nowhere claiming you know anything that somebody did before reaching out first and at least just i don't know ha have have some kind of like like trying to get clarity from it right like but but like and I, i'm not i'm not i'm not like throwing shade on this person i think I, I actually feel bad because with the way that everything has been going for the past few years with with you know content creators um you know god god have mercy upon that phrase um at this point like uh i think that's what people are taught is how you deal with these things you make a big public stink out of it like i had a i had a thing where um oh my god uh i, I don't mean to change the subject but it's 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 kind of similar where um i i had a picture taken of me at a convention um and it was it was brought up to me as like, hey, you know, as part of our deal with our um, our guests, we do these headshots. You know, we'll we'll give you some free headshots that you can use and stuff. I remember this. Yeah, you told me about this. I was like, oh yeah, the, the absolutely. I mean, the, you you can never have too many headshots. You know, you have some more options, whatever. Cool. So, um, and it was a weird situation. Like like I was just like, okay, cool. Like they're just like, okay, stand here. And I'm pretty sure they just like randomly asked somebody outside. <laughs> Hey, you have a camera. Can you come take this picture? I, I know that's not what happened, but it's what looked like it happened because, like, this person was actually like doing work for the convention, and um, they took the picture, and it was like, all right, cool, sweet. Um, so then a few months later, I got the picture back, and I'm like, cool, it's 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 a headshot, great, I can use that. Um, and I posted it in like two or three places online because it was just it was a nice it was a nice headshot. I liked it. Um, a few months later. At Momocon, we're doing our signing, and this lady, uh, you know, more or less middle-aged uh, woman comes up to me with a printout of this picture, um, like well-printed, and it looked very professional, um, put it down and said, hi, could you sign this? And I looked up at this lady, and I was like, this is not somebody who likes heavy metal, heavy metal, sometimes gent inspired video game YouTube videos. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume the best, but something's off about this. And I looked up and I, I, I said to her, I was just like, um, hey, you know, like, I don't own the rights to this picture, you know, like, cause like, I, I just wanted to make that clear to her, you know, like that, like, I don't like, cause like when you do that kind of stuff, you want to have like, all that stuff in contract and stuff so like you can distribute it and and sell it or, or whatever whatever but i did not have those rights to this picture it just i used it for a few promotional things as was per our my agreement with the convention she just kind of said oh well i don't know anything about that and i was like all right so then i signed it <laughs> like it's like you know i just felt like i was i was kind of looking too far into it um sure mm -hmm. enough Three months later go by, and I get a message on Instagram, and the well a notification. The notification was that I was tagged in an Instagram story of somebody trying to make a smear campaign on me because I was trying to sell the picture that they had rights to on eBay. Oh yeah, that's right. Jesus, a signed picture of myself on eBay. So this woman took that signed picture clearly thought I was somebody I wasn't put it on eBay and then instead of privately hit me up and clear it up they went to Instagram to try to like make a whole thing on me about how like I can't believe how low creators will go in this day to try to sell things that aren't th I'm just like and I sent him an email I'm like dude what is going on and it was it was it was hard because like I was just kind of like listen dude like it's just not how you deal with these things. And I mean, I, I'm sorry, but it's just, it's not. And, he, you know, I think he, he kind of tried to like almost double down on the fact that, that like, well, I should have known or something. I'm like, dude, you didn't listen to what I did. Like, I told him everything that had happened. And then he, and then when he realizes just like what the situation was, he was like, oh, well, it's definitely the convention's fault. I'm like, listen, <laughs> like <laughs> the, the, the issue here is that you should have privately hit me up.
that would that would have saved so much time the you know it, it would have saved so much mental energy and i don't think it's these people's fault i think it's just like that's what when you go on twitter and you see how these situations are happening that's conflict resolution in 2021 yeah it's you're you're completely correct and it's also sad because there's a lot of uh I, i'm not really up to date on who is who on on youtube or, or twitch but i see their names on twitter in my explore tab yeah and like i don't know who these people are but i've learned who these people are because they just keep showing up every month and i'm like ah this is what happened now <laughs> and then and like I'm, I'm like i don't even know this person i've learned who these people are from little tiny bite-sized clips of like someone talking and then making an apology video and i'm like what is happening what is yeah. wrong with our youth <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's the kids who are wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know well, no, I mean, it's, it's, it is, it, I think it's just because it's bite sized content. It's something that anybody, regardless of, you know, uh, investment into these characters and in these, in these personalities who are real people, that's the other thing that I think people don't, don't really internalize is like, you know, these aren't, these aren't the Simpsons on your TV anymore. This is human beings with human lives doing human things with human interactions with other human people, with other human humans, is what I almost said. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's totally different, but people still act, like you can really quickly bite sized e eat up that like ooh ooh here's some drama who's cheating on who who's stealing content from who who's selling eBay pictures of who you know like <laughs> Jules, this is actually really funny. Um, I went onto eBay while you were saying that, and oh. I looked I looked up my name, and I'm pretty sure the same lady is actually selling uh, one of my posters, which is fine because I have I'm the right to that poster. I'm making a cancel video. I'm making no. the cancel video <laughs> no, no, no. right now. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me preface this. Camera. I feel like... Hold on. What? Let me preface this with, if y'all want a poster or a pin, you do not need to buy it from somebody. I will give it to you for free. Buy that merch. <laughs> Please. Buy I that have merch. merch. You can have it for free. There's no need to go and buy it off of eBay. I will literally give you one at a convention if we meet up. Trust me on that. Okay. <laughs> I, I uh, think there's also this this weird sort of like I don't know what you call it, but like just like this overarching like view of like like almost like a dichotomy of truth versus what will receive attention, and not not oh, even yeah. like not even like uh, like they're opposing, but like where like. I guess in some ways they are opposing, but like people try to force them to meet, like like so often when like when one does not apply to the other, so, uh, a lot of times. Mm. Yeah, but it's, yeah, like it, it's 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 all it, nutty. <laughs> I think that's part of the whole, um, you know. Uh... Oh God, I... what is the word? I'm. <sighs> uh, so... I mean, like, I went to was, dichotomy because I, could, because I couldn't think of another word. Two uh, uh, It's uh, not pseudo, uh, not pseudo social. So, oh God. Parasocial? Parasocial. I, all I could think of was the word torsion. Parasocial. Oh God. Why? Be, because like, 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 there was like a torsion of the the understanding of your personal, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, there, there was. Yeah, that, that's how you use that word. That's fine. Yeah, sure right. Is. So, like, one <laughs> testicle is the is the like the real relationship that you have with these people, and the other testicle is the perceived one, and they are torsioned. <laughs> They're torted. Man, what is the verb for torsion? When Twisted. I when I think when I think Twisted back to this to this specific <laughs> podcast, this specific episode, I'm just gonna remember Jules going on some sort of tirade about like my left testicle plays honey pop, but my right testicle does cocaine. You have to get it right. And then that is the takeaway. <laughs> Don't get them confused. I, my right like, testicle has never once played honey pop. I, I I can't believe how like how like we bounce so far back and forth between like oh yeah serious content creator stuff giving advice um these are some controversies we had testicle torsion uh, cocaine oh man okay yeah contort yeah contort this testicle does does blow the other one does cocaine they're not the same thing one thing is an energy drink the other one is a drug don't do drugs kids anyway. Parasocial about, relationships. About YouTube. 
How about you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of Twitch Prime? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, uh, Prime Gaming, as it were. But I think looking at uh, at SEO in the upcoming quarter, I think we were going to see. <laughs> yeah, CPMs are down, man. They they just, wow, just, damn. Just, oh God. <laughs> But yeah, the, I to to wrap up that whole conversation, I think a big part of it is the the parasocial like the 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 fast way of describing a very complex subject of parasocial is like um you know in the sims when like you're like you have two people like talking to each other and they have like the friendship bar that goes up. Yeah. Like, wow, I love planes. I love planes too, you know. And they're like deep dab do doop dab da and their their bars go up. Like what happens in a parasocial relationship, which is literally what you guys are experiencing right now, right now watching. We're not, but you 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 watching are, are are getting one bar going up, while our bar does not move. You know, we 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 don't know anything about you guys. Yeah, like um, we say we say like on here like we hey, we like planes. Okay, now you know we like planes. But, but we don't know if you like planes. Tim, please right. do not speak for me. I do not like planes. <laughs> right. Well, well, that's important. That that's an important point. That that now now chat has more has more friendship bar. They're, they they just did their do do da di da 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 simish to you. And but like the big thing is like these are not interactions that human beings are yet uh, developed to one hundred percent healthily uh, digest. Right. You know. It's like so, whenever you go, whenever yeah. you go to a convention, and uh, you're like, let's say you're standing there, somebody comes up to you and goes, "Yo, what's up? What's up, Jared? How are you?" And I'm like, "Hey, hey, hey. I have um, no idea who you are." <laughs> and then, and wow, say, wow, and then you're a friendly guy, aren't you? Yeah, yeah right. They say, they say like, "Yo, I'm this guy from your from your cast," and I'm like, "Oh, frick! I know who you are. You're super right. cool in the chat because like we have no clue what." like most of y'all look like or what y'all are into or whatever y'all are like, you know, doing, but it's y'all are able to see and uh, experience like what we do on a daily basis. So right. it's, it's very strange, especially like conventions. Like it blew my mind the first time somebody recognized who I was, but I had no freaking no idea who they were. were. Yeah. It was yeah. so strange to me. And yeah, it's, it's the, the whole point I'm bringing it up is like, I think that that, that is a big, um, that's a big uh, reason why this stuff happens is like, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're developing in this weird landscape of of parasocial relationships that the way that we deal with conflict resolution is ways in which people on a television screen would do it. You know, people in The Simpsons would do it or something. That's, you know what I mean? Like That's like, a really it, good, it's like really dramatized, like for sure. Yeah, it's super dramatized. And I, yeah, like I think that that's that's why that happens. And I hope... I hope if anything, just talking about it will help. But I, I, I know everybody in this chat that you like. You guys would never do that stuff, right? Right, chat. Do you guys like planes? <laughs> there's also oh there's God. also like there's also a massive imbalance as well in that where it's like, you know, a range of like tens to like maybe like thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of people are, of, of people are looking in on one person, and that yeah. one person could never in their lifetime make some kind of like personal connection to each and every one of those people yeah but that's how we've developed as human beings like yeah you know not not long ago like not long ago you you died within like 10 miles of where you were born you know like we didn't mm. have planes and which i like or <laughs> like cars or Jesus. anything like i you know and, and i feel like you know we're develop we're, you know the tech technology is developing exponentially and i think it's I think it's important to kind of just like take a quick step and be like, all right, everybody, let's slow down for a quick second. Let's let, let, like let's let's take stock of what we've got, <laughs> what we've got going on. Okay, things are happening fast. Let's you know, and that's kind of what I like to, I like to do. And well, like, truly, oh god, no, no, you go ahead because this I am going to. <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna you're, gonna, you're gonna destroy it. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, so okay, so basically, what I was gonna say was, um, uh, I saw in the chat a minute ago, like, uh, some some people are really nervous about coming up to people at conventions and stuff because mm. of the disconnect. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I could speak for everybody, but I'll speak for myself. Um, I very much enjoy meeting y'all in person. I very much do, as long as it is, you know, a uh, you know, 
uh, uh, convention based environment and something like if you come to me while I'm eating at a, at a restaurant and, and like try to sit down with me, I'm going to be like, who the frick, you know? Yeah. But if, if you're like, yo, I love your stuff. Yeah. Uh, can I get like a picture or something or like, just want to say, Hey, thank you for streaming that. Oh, frick. That makes my whole freaking day. Like, yeah. I love that. But yeah. like, it has to be like super, it has to be chill. You know, like don't, that's don't follow me to my hotel room, please. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. Like, I've I've had some I've had some very interesting uh, experiences with individuals, and I don't want to bring them up on this podcast. But man, yeah, that Jules character, you know, no, I'm just joking. Um, yeah, that but, Jerry guy, that Jerry, yeah, Jerry, 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 Jerry. Bob and Julia, God dang it, Jerry. <laughs> and then you know, uh, it, it's what uh, the other guy, Steve uh, Hen Georg. Don't trust anyone named Stephen <laughs> George. I don't know them, but I don't like them. I've never heard of them. <laughs> what were you going to say, though, Stephen? I, I was hear, going to I say want you that, to destroy this. Well, I was I was simply going to say that that um, listening to Jules wax poetic, you know, just moments after <laughs> a bizarre, you know, comedy bit. Has really uh, meant the world to me. This has been a fun episode. It has been mm -hmm. a bit of a roller coaster, but I think that there's been useful information that can be gleaned uh, and useful comedy that can be uh, used to invoke a jolly. Um, <laughs> so I think that everyone's had a really great time. I do think we should wrap up because in a minute, Dan's going to just show up and he's well, going Dan to. Well, Dan hasn't said his one word yet. Dan's going to well, be like, bruh. Bruh. His one word is going to be stop. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, bruh! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I was expecting torsion, but uh, I, I think he went with the. I think he went with the best option, to be honest. All right, I'll, and on I'll, that I'll, on I'll, that I'll note, play I'll play this out. Will the torsion be unbroken by the torsion? And by and by, what is happening? There's a b better home. Elbowism. There's, there's a bear the home. The Lord in the sky. There's everybody wait. now. Will the circle? <laughs> yeah. circle. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. broken. By and by. by, and by. by. Can't hear the words. There's a burger. There's a burger. In a wedgie. In the sky. In the sky. In the sky. In the sky again. Who here came from Shelby County? I see that hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Oh my God, Jules. The frick. Thanks All for right. having me, guys. I, I really we, appreciate we, it. We should wrap up. What were the talking points? All right. Talking points for this episode were interrupted intro, trash <laughs> coffee, blow my mind, hyper elbowism, content with content, the second one, doorbell man, game with plot, favorite hymns, spelled H-I-M-S for some reason. <laughs> You're all Hol my favorite hymns. Wholesome Avengers, and don't throw shade. I think I think it was content with content. content. Yeah, it says, I know how to spell it. Was on purpose. The English Dan, language Dan's saving sucks. himself right now. And or I don't remember what happened this podcast. Uh, let's see what everyone's doing this week, or I guess this month in this case. Uh, next week for me marks. 14 years of doing online content. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's too long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm going to figure out something to do in regards to that, I guess. Otherwise, uh, this week's been weird. So, I don't know if we're on our usual stream schedule or not. Uh, but I'm going to assume currently we are. So tomorrow I'll put up a poll for subs to see if I'm doing uh, game clearing or if we're doing uh, power trip. Either one. And then Saturday's fortune cookie. Tom. Uh, on Thursday, I'm going to be doing uh, a Minecraft stream with uh, with some of the TRG family. 
Uh, so that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. That'll be around five or six p.m. Oh, Central Time. Shit. I haven't nailed down a time for that. <laughs> what, Sorry, uh, I need to jump in after you, Tom. Sorry, you just reminded me of something I forgot. It was very important. Okay, and uh, next week, uh, next week on Tuesday is uh, is my birthday, so I'm probably gonna do something for that. Hey, maybe hey. as maybe Happy a stream. Maybe, maybe I'll I will get a large cake and a large alcohol, and we will smash them together in some unholy. Cake a hall, cake a hall, cake a hall, cake a hall. There we go. You own the American size, large, and that's it. Large, <laughs> and that's it. I'll get myself. A, I'll get myself one one large burger. You, you know, <laughs> somebody, su somebody suggested. Uh, somebody suggested Mario Party in it, and I'd be li reliving uh, a, a time when I stream Mario Party, a Mario Party drinking game, and uh, somebody made so like I got donated so many subs that I broke down crying. Anyway, you can also find me on uh, Twitter at Tom Fox. Uh, that's where that's usually where the first updates go for uh, my videos and my streams. Otherwise, you can follow me on YouTube at Tom Fox. I got a Discord link somewhere, uh, and I got a Twitch, Tom Fox. All right, anyway, Tom, uh, John, John, with your yeah. oh shit, you're able to jump yeah, in. Yeah, you you reminded me about Thursday because uh, I can't make it to the TRG Minecraft stream because on Thursday I am playing in a competitive Mario Party match for charity. Uh, That's good. It's going to be a 50 turn Mario Party game against Zoom Zyke, Slim Kirby, and Elegant Matt. And the winner of this match uh, gets money uh, from a prize pool given to the charity of their choice. I'm going to be playing for Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, everyone else has got some really good uh, charities picked as well. Nice. And uh, it is going to be v extremely competitive and extremely crazy. And that's going to be 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, on Thursday. Neat. Now, Steven. Also, 50 turns is... Uh, <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> be a, a thing! That's gonna be... Ooh. Mm. Yep. Uh, for us... I don't know. We, we make stuff. Uh, breakfast, stream, Zelda. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Damn. Breakfast, stream... Like, Zelda. I don't know. Like, it's the what's, same. We, what's the, the link to thing? that, Steven? Uh, my name is Steven George, and if you type it into your search engine, it'll probably lead you to where you need to go. <laughs> I don't know. It's not Thursday, that, it's not that Thursday, difficult. Thursday, Thursday, breakfast stream. Cards, Steven <laughs> George and Mallory makes on breakfast stream. <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> They're going to literally suplex a Pop-Tart. <laughs> I mean, into my mouth, yeah. I, yeah. I bet I could fit. Come for the toast and coffee. Could... Stay for the improv. <laughs> <laughs> Subscription pays for the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> I could probably fit the whole Pop-Tart in my mouth. Freaking I've never incredible. tried, but I bet I could. See it see it live this Thursday. Thursday, <laughs> Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> All right, Jared. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, 4.30 Eastern drum streams. Um, and yeah, that's about it, truthfully. Um, we, pop, uh, we pop a video on YouTube every day, too. Uh, that's, yeah, that's it. Do, we... <laughs> do, I, get to, do I get to, do I get to plug my plug my boy yeah plug Please, yourself let's, up let's go let's let's plug myself up <laughs> don't plug yourself people. up no, all right here we go everybody get ready for my plug no um i'm probably gonna stream right after this um doing a, about <laughs> three uh speed runs i'm um, doing any percent um i just released a cover of satin panties from friday night funkin today um it's it a lot of people have been really enjoying the the my covers of uh, that where uh, Jack plays the mom and Adrian yeah, plays the, the, the yeah, that, that MILF cover was awesome. Yeah, we, we just did another one today. Came out today, and uh, Adriana is back in her uh, her position as my girlfriend. You know, just just for the content, not in real life or anything. Um, and she she bobs her head back and forth, uh, just like in the game, and it's a lot of fun. And, and yeah, check it out. Uh, I do uh, covers every Tuesday at youtubecom slash jewels 7 x I believe. I don't think I got that one. I think it's. Uh, just, just search family jewels you'll you'll find it um and then stream highlights on youtube.com slash jules conroy which are uh majority are edited by hypercole um and uh all my other editors and myself um those come out monday 
Thursday and Saturday. Um, and then other than that, I'm going to be playing uh, Honey Pop for 14 hours every night. I would love <laughs> to play uh, Minecraft with you guys on Thursday. So I'm hoping that I can um, I can join you guys with that. Yeah, just uh, we, we can talk more about it after the podcast. All right. And that's going to do it, everybody. A special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and our producer is Motion Dan. Next episode of Disco Only Podcast is going to be Tuesday. Assuming there's no actual change, April 6th, 2021. Oh, Dan's It's Dan's birthday. birthday! The only word he can say is birthday. Happy birthday, Dan. We're going to make you work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do we Have do you want to reschedule do you want us to reschedule no okay what what's he gonna be doing <laughs> producing yeah yeah i know he's not it's he's fine it's Mal. it's uh, mal's birthday yeah. too mal and dan have the same day oh is mal gonna be upset no <laughs> <laughs> she's listening right now and i know she is hi mal no. and yes we're doing the podcast on your birthday it's the best gift i could give you <laughs> i like how i'm like hey we'll give we'll give dan an out and meanwhile the was like yeah no mal doesn't give a fuck yo why don't we make that the day that like that dan's the guest that's not Dude. a bad idea actually that's a great idea go. and we give <laughs> everyone's gonna be like words. wait dan can talk <laughs> <laughs> we thought dan was teller we, we give him a spot give him a couple extra words you know it's perfect Good Lord. All right. We're out, everybody. See you all next month. Have a good night. Bye.